The lesson of the internet is that efficiency is not the primary consideration. The ability to grow and adapt to changing requirements is the primary consideration. This makes simplicity and uniformity very precious indeed. This is one of those statements that's awfully hard to disagree with when you look at it, like, you know, who's against the ability to grow and adapt? But it turns out to actually be an incredibly revolutionary way of thinking about running a network. It's saying that they want the network not to be a Christmas tree laden with every single ornament of every feature that somebody wants. They wanted just the barest minimum of features that would get data from point A to point Z without any great hassle, but otherwise allowing applications at the end points to add on the tinsel and the ornaments. But the network in the middle would be simple, simple, simple. To, to illustrate this, why don't I just imagine doing the U.S. Postal Service not with a postmaster general who has a huge fleet of trucks, uh, government-run trucks, that visit every single American home and business six days a week. Isn't that amazing? An agent of the government knocks on everybody's door every day except Sunday. That's pretty astonishing, and it requires a lot of centralized hierarchical control. It's not a decentralized internet-like network. So imagine if you didn't have an opportunity to have the postman do your work for you. How might then things work? Well, the idea is to have people near you do some of the work for you. And uh, how best to explain this? Well, getting back to our cloud idea, if you look inside the cloud, you just see lots of little clouds inside. And uh, imagine I wasn't speaking to a camera, but instead was speaking like a normal person would to a room full of people. If I wanted to move uh, a microphone or my clicker from the front of the room to the back of the room, I could hire you know, some person to take it and run it to the back of the room. That's the US Postal Service way of doing it. Or I could pass it just one arm's reach ahead to the person in the front row who would pass it back a row, who would pass it back a row, and eventually it would get to where it's going. And uh, to get back to the Postal Service metaphor, it's as if you went to your front door and you checked your mail in the late afternoon. And there's some mail for you. You take that in your house and you throw it away. There's some mail for people that are west of you. And you just take that mail, you have reason to know which way West is and how it's been addressed so that it's just westerly. Maybe you see it's addressed to California and you're in Massachusetts, so you know it has to go west. So you walk one house westward and drop it in their box and then go back to your house. And there's some mail for the east, you walk to the east and you do that. There's some mail for the north, you walk across the street, put it in the house across the street, and then you're done. And it's not asking a lot of any one entity to just do that short hop. But if you multiply all the hops together, eventually you can get to where you're going. And that can work quite well if, you again, you don't want to have to fund a massive network of postal trucks to get the mail to where it's going at roughly the third class rate. That's the uh, fairly effective metaphor for even today how the internet works.